Hi, it's Joe Lyons, and this is a demonstration of a screen clipping script that I piecemealed together, Frankenstein, from a, I borrowed heavily from a, I have no idea how to say it correctly, Maestrieth, and learning one. Maestrieth had an image uh, upload to Imager um, using an API, and then learning one had the screen clipping part, and I added in some stuff with the uh, automatically attaching it to an email um, and uh, back to the imager um, API call as well. So anyway, let me demonstrate a couple of uses of it. Um, and then I added a little more help files, which I didn't have before. And let's see. So first off, in, in case you don't currently use one, let me demonstrate some of the, the benefits of having this. So and let's see. Here we go. So let's say um, you were doing something here. And let's say I want to compare 2015 to a previous year, and yet obviously be pretty hard to do within a website. So if you hold down the Windows key, and I'm going to grab the header tier, so I'll get both of those, and now I can just scroll down, and I can compare any year to 2015, right? Super easy. Um, obviously, even if I wanted to say, oh, and you know what, I want to compare 1966 as well, I can drag that up, and just keep scrolling, right? Makes it very easy, convenient, especially if you're working from a laptop, and you want to see um, several different screens. Also, if if I was doing something, and I wanted to, oh, I wanted to have this, but then go to a different web page, right? It'll sit on top, which is very handy. You click up or right, disappears. Incredibly handy. The other thing I did notice, which I didn't mention in my other post, is um, if let's get down to my desktop here and we go into screen resolution, and if where is that in? this advanced settings. If your DPI stuff is set to, to to make the text, here we go, make text bigger and smaller. If this is set to 125 or 150 or anything other than 100, the square that you draw when you do it is going to, it'll shrink down some and it's really annoying. So I've set mine to be 100 and then I just, I go about other ways to make the font bigger with my resolution and stuff. Uh, but that was one, it was a big mystery to me of why that kept happening. And as long as you make this the default to be 100%, it doesn't have that issue. Um, the second example, let's say I also I have some data here. Oh, let me bring it over. This is the actual script, um, which I'll post, repost, and then here, let's say I have, so here's some data, I think, on population. I forget what it was, but it's very wide, right? And so, if it's in Excel, obviously you can freeze the panes, but, you know, sometimes I'm like, hey, I just want to old school real quickly, grab that, and now I can just scroll over, right, that this first row is the year, so it makes it very, very easy for me to um, keep that header, for lack of a better term, um, in the column, right, or again, if I wanted to compare everything to 1994 and scroll across, right, it, it just makes it super easy and convenient, I can eyeball it, I can do it in a split second, um, and, it, and it's super fast. Now let's say I wanted to post this to uh, to Facebook or somewhere, right? Oops, I actually I clicked the wrong button. So um, if I hit hold down control on Windows, and by the way here, you'll notice if you double click here, or single, so that brings double click, single click, oh sorry, right click and hit help, they both do the same thing. They bring up this window, menu that'll show you for the general, it's Windows and left mouse click dragging for the imager one, it's control windows, left mouse click dragging, and then for Outlook, it's going to attach it as a um, a file. And I also changed to where it just attaches a PNG file, because for the most part, they, they're very efficient. Um, it'll automatically write the email. So I'll demonstrate those in a second, but wanted to bring up, this is how you can pull up the help file. If you can't remember the hotkeys, um, obviously it'll take a little bit of time, but once you do, it's, it's there. for the most part, you know, I use more 80 percent of the time this windows and left mouse button and then all you have to do is remember I clicked the you know windows into the left or windows into the right to do these two different functions um, and then so this will be a demo to the video and this is me on LinkedIn who cares um, okay so let's demo the uh, let's say I was gonna post something and I wanted to borrow it let's say I wanted to borrow Unfortunately, they don't, they don't have December's numbers here because this was a crazy year here in Dallas for the amount of rain. But let's say I wanted to post this as an image to um, Facebook. So I just did that, and here in a second, you'll see it says it splashes up here. And now, if I actually, if I navigate to the URL that now is on my clipboard, you'll see that image at that URL. So the other cool thing, I believe, is... Uh, 
if you come in here, I can just say what's on your mind, and I can paste that, um, and it'll automatically, um, let me see, how do I, not public, because I look like an idiot, only me, post. So here, you'll see it, it can post to it automatically, right? Um, which is pretty handy. So in, in just a couple seconds, right, I can post to it. Or <laughs> the way I used to do this was I just had the file, the path to the file. Um, and and um, the third way that I use this a lot is, let's say, I wanted to email something to someone. I'm working on this page. You're like, I'm trying to show you this. Well, if I hold down the Windows and Alt key, it'll take this and it's going to write an email. So it writes in the email, does it all for me, and, and here now, I have it attached as a PNG, but I also have the link that, um, it, it's doing the image upload as well, just because sometimes this file's large, I don't want to email it, and this way I think can still have the file as long as they have access to the internet. Um, sometimes you want a static, though, and you want to have it there where they know they have the file, and, and so you might still want the PNG file. Also, um, I made it pretty simple in here, in the script, to um, go ahead and make tweaks to if you want the both files attached. Let me see. I think I'm already... Oh, here we go. Um, so in here, this is where if you uncomment these, it'll it'll save it to... It'll do the BMP, and basically all you have to remember is, is uppercase this extension and put in your extension, and that's what... Uh, what is it? GDIP, I think. That's what the library's relying on, which I've also piecemealed into the bottom of the script because a lot of people don't have that library, and they get confused with libraries, and this way it's all in one. Um, but you can you can comment or uncomment these, or add in, I think, GIF as well, or there, there's a lot of different formats you can do. Um, and then, so that's why this one is still here, and it's going to put the file, the, the path to, to that there. Um, down here is the only other thing you do. is like, oh, if you want to actually get to add those attachments, right, then this would go ahead and add them. Of course, you have to make sure up above you've, you've told it to create them. But for the most part, PNG is a good quality, it's a good compromise between good quality and low file size. So I just decided to go ahead and make that default. Um, also, most uploading um, websites will take it. And uh, that's it. You can you can come down, let's see, where is it? Go in here and obviously tweak uh, tweak the, uh, the email, right? Maybe add in your own signature if you like. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, I find this script incredibly helpful. Now with the upload, imager upload as well, it can just come in handy. And that's it. Thanks.